Hi everyone, it's Nena, Foxy Mama 365 We're back again with the continuation of Leaving Neverland So before we go right in, uh, this is the second part of the HBO documentary Leaving Neverland And immediately after, Oprah did an interview with the two alleged victims that uh, said Michael Jackson had actually assaulted them when they were kids and they had like a relationship with him uh, this documentary really has been dragged by a lot of people. A lot of people were not happy with Oprah. So if you know where Oprah is, you might probably need to buy her a wig or something because she's got no more hair because she's been dragged. Her lace fronts have been, have been pulled off. <laughs> I told her, I said, Oprah girl, don't do it. Mm -mm, don't do it. Because she said, oh, we're going to be talking about the victims. And people were like, hey, why are you doing this? I thought Michael Jackson was your friend or some sort. Uh, apparently, I don't know, but she's like she wants to talk about the the abuse of children. I think that's really her focus. But it kind of seemed judgmental. A lot of people felt because it was one-sided, and also the fact that Michael Jackson is has passed on and is unable to, you know, come back with his defense. So, pretty much what I got out of her one-hour documentary with the producers of the show and the two gentlemen was that Oprah was saying, um, talking to the guys and asking what happened, but she felt this is, this is an issue, child sexual abuse is an issue that she's been trying to bring to the forefront, but it has been so difficult for people to catch on, and she wants to use this opportunity to, to talk about it. And she says so that she's talking to the gentlemen and interviewing them, and they say that Michael Jackson was like a god to them. So then Oprah says the word sexual abuse Abuse is not a good word because the children really don't understand that word like a child a seven-year-old a five-year-old cannot say abuse because they don't understand it You know and I get that pretty much she's saying because to the child the molester might usually be saying Oh, it's love or showing them some love and buying them things or in some cases They might actually be like oh, it's punishment for something you have done wrong, you know, and That made that that made a lot of sense, you know we also got from Oprah that apparently the two gentlemen were not paid anything to do that interview, that they really just wanted to come out. I mean, they had come out years before, but now they really just wanted to come and speak their piece. And it was really powerful. Um, also, what came out of it was the fact that the producers were saying, were, being, were asked, oh, how come they did not interview anyone from Michael Jackson's side, that it was a skewed interview because it was one-sided. And the producers said, and his name is Dan Reed. Dan Reed says, what do I have to interview someone else for? Because they were not in the bedroom with Michael Jackson. It was the children that were in the bedroom with Michael Jackson. So really, what can his family say? I get that, but uh, any which ways, we'll see. So moving right back into the living Neverland, we see where, oh, two things. Uh, the gentlemen, one of some of them have said that they're also receiving death threats and as at today which is sad and as at today some radio stations are, have decided that they're not going to be carrying michael jackson music anymore uh, i don't know if i agree with that and what i uh, it's just all a lot anyway moving right back into let's dive right back into it so we see at this point the second part comes into the charges and the allegation this is all in 1993 where I think his name is Jordi Chandler has accused Michael Jackson of touching him sexually and all of that and now they're going to court. He's been represented by Gloria Aldridge who you all we all know is a fierce women's rights uh, defense lawyer. Uh, Michael Jackson has also been I think he's represented by Johnny Cochran at this point and they're going back and forth and he's asked now that Wade and Jimmy should actually speak up for him. Now, if you remember, it had gotten to the stage in their relationship with Michael Jackson where they felt they were, there was some kind of jealousy because at this point, Macaulay Culkin and jo Jordan, Jordan had now like replaced them and I think there was another Brett Barnes, Barnes who says he doesn't wish to be mentioned in this whole documentary, he just wants to be left alone. But apparently they had now stepped in and they were like the it boys for Michael at this point. So they had, they had kind of lost a little touch with Michael. But from time to time, they would actually speak with him or connect with him. But at this point, they had started moving on in their, with their lives and their careers. So they kind of felt a kind of way. But 
Michael had now started calling, reaching back out to them and was trying to coach them and say, oh, you guys are going to speak up for me. They are my friends and this is all, it's all lies and this is what you, we want you to say. And they had like a rehearsal of what they were going to say. So the family of Wade, Wade Robson, actually did sit down and with his sister, his mom, and they were like, no, nothing happened. It didn't happen. No way. And pretty much that was what, how Michael Jackson was let off on that. Also, the family of Jimmy also did the same with the safe with the safe chocks. Now, what what I found interesting was the fact that Michael Jackson had actually bought a house and paid the, for the house and said they can be paying him in little in in the, with a loan and they were paying and they had low interest and immediately after the case and the charge was dropped, Michael Jackson told them they shouldn't bother paying for the house that they could keep the house and he didn't want the money anymore. And I side-eyed that because I was like, okay, it seemed like a payoff for coming to court and defending me. It was alleged at the end of the day, he paid between 5 million to 25 million to settle out of court. Now, this was in 1993. Anyways, so now Wade goes back to Neverland and he continues the sexual abuse, even at 14. I think Wade is now about 14. And MJ, literally later on, is no longer really into him. But they do have one or two sexual encounters and he now michael now literally gets married to lisa marie preston now it seemed and he kept on saying to him that oh it's something that has to be done because all this while michael had said oh he didn't really like women and women were evil so it was kind of strange to them that why then is he getting married anyways he did get married to lisa marie presley i think it was very, like maybe like 12 months or maybe two years or something like that so anyways, it, the sexual, it still continued, you know, and then um, we also see where as, as, the, as it continues, as the relationship continue and they have a take a break, Michael is like uh, no longer that much in their lives, which was kind of sad. Now we also see the effect of them leaving their father Wade in Australia, that is the, the Wade Robsons who have left their father. We see where the older brother who had been left with the brother decides he wants to go, you know, discover himself and he leaves the father all alone. And his father is like asking him, don't go, don't go. And that night, literally as he lands, he, get a, he gets a phone call saying that, oh, his father had hung himself or had committed suicide. And this was kind of a really big blow to the family. You know, I don't know how they would ever be able, they would ever forgive themselves because they felt, I think the man kind of felt abandoned, even though his me mental state of mind also was called into play as well. But it was just sad all around. So we also see the wives coming in. Jimmy gets married to Laura and also we see his depression also setting in. Same thing with Wade who marries Amanda and they're married and they start having children. But there is something wrong. They can't pinpoint what it is, but for sure something is wrong because they go into serious depression. Wade continues to work. He gets into the Cirque du Soleil, uh, some of some of their their choreography, and he help, he does that kind of work. But after a while, he's literally unable to continue. The depression is really bad. At a point, they contemplate divorce, but his wife hangs in there and is trying to you know see what they can do, and they go into therapy. Now, here comes the second allegation. Now, this is now like in 2000, 2003, the allegation. And now this time, Michael is actually arrested for 10 counts of sexual assault. And it's just so sad. Now, at this point, his lawyer is Mark Gorgos. Yeah, that's his lawyer. And he now comes back again to meet the boys and is asking them once more to please come up and speak for on his behalf. And at this point... Jimmy is able to go up to his mom. He doesn't tell her anything, but he just says, I don't want to be a part of it. Michael is evil. Michael is not a good man. Hmm. His mom didn't really ask him questions or details, but like a mother, she kind of got it and she knew. At this point, she knew. She said she never really asked him what, was, what it was, but the safe chucks were like, no. Even though her husband was still on Michael's side and always felt Michael couldn't do anything like that, but they decided not to go on. Now, we all, he, uh, J, Jimmy tells us that he, Michael actually calls him and is talking to him and trying to coerce him into doing this, uh, you know, speak, in, coming into court to help him out. And Jimmy's at this point to say, Michael, 
you know what i'm not really interested i wish you the best and then at this point he says allegedly don't come for me all allegedly that michael begins to try to threaten him and saying oh he's gonna do all kinds of stuff to him if he doesn't come and at this point the boys are 21 22 and jimmy's like don't ever call me again you know all the best with your trial you know and he's able to hold his ground so the safe chucks don't get involved <coughs> excuse me however it's a different situation for the for the robsons wade decides oh he will he will actually come to court and represent mike and now at this point he's 21 so you're wondering doesn't he still understand what abuse is or oh, so i think he just felt a kind of guilt that oh if he leaves mike because he went to the he still went back to neverland uh ranch and when he was there he said he saw michael with his children and his little daughter at that time paris was very little and Paris was saying, Daddy, that, and he was like, oh, he couldn't imagine Michael going to jail. And he felt, oh, if he didn't help Michael, Michael might end up in jail. So he agrees to actually testify in 2003. And who can ever forget the pigeon lady who was outside the court because and releasing the pigeons as the charges were being read and Michael was not guilty for any of the 10 counts. Now, they also talk about the jurors who were like, oh, one lady says, oh, she wasn't happy about how one of the defendants came and snapped her finger at her. You know, so sometimes you're like, these jurors are, uh, uh. any which way, Michael is let off the hook. And immediately after that, he takes off and is literally not, I think he moved to Bahrain, I think it was, somewhere in the Middle East. And he was living out, he lived there for like about eight, nine years. And eventually he came back to Las Vegas. And at this point, the boys have started getting along. They're doing their own, getting their lives going and they're doing their own thing. From time to time, the Wade family still uh, were in contact with Michael. But at this point, they're obviously married with kids. Or at least I think Jimmy had two kids and, and uh, Wade had one a daughter. So it's all just a mess. Now, what I what I I realized that nobody mentioned is the Jesus juice. The Jesus juice was alcohol alleged to have been given to children by Michael Jackson. I think it came up more in the try in the first trial, but nobody ever mentioned anything about that. And I was like, okay, maybe the boys were not also given that. <sighs> so, apparently, what has helped the men to actually step up and why they are coming forth is because of. The fact that now they have children and they're looking at their children and then they're realizing oh something is wrong you know this couldn't have been right now Wade says one day he's he's actually talking to a shrink now at this point he's no longer really working but he's just trying to get along with life and he's talking to a shrink and he's still telling the lie because he, he had kind of in his head decided that this lie was going to follow him all the way to his grave and i understand that you know but then it was such a heavy burden the secret this you know keeping it it's just such a heavy burden so he, he, they say that they might not have even been mentally developed because they are probably still children in their minds i don't know so we see the wives dealing having to deal with the fallback the blowback of all the of what had happened to them you know as they're even though they are much older now but they're still like there's a lot of aggression there is a lot of anger there's a lot of resentment there's a lot of self-hatred you know and they're talking about it and trying to figure it out and eventually it comes to a headlong where they now like wade talks to his brother apparently the brother's wife had seen something and had had a revelation in a dream and she was like oh michael it was revealed to her that wade was telling her that michael did have molest molest her and apparently wade had just spoken to his shrink and actually mentioned this to his shrink so his brother was talking with him and he was like oh funny this happened my wife was telling me and wade was trying to laugh it off but then he was like yes it really did happen and everybody in his family is like what you know and they're all like talking about it and he's able to finally come forward but they don't really get all the nitty-gritty details but he actually tells them that yes it happened he ends up going to see a shrink with his mom and his mom is also told that this actually happened and she's in shock but you see that wade really resents his mom i don't know why because he didn't really go into details as to why i mean 
I think maybe he felt that his mom was the one should have protected him and didn't protect him. And there's a lot of anger from the family that she split up the family. Their father committed suicide. So it's a lot. At the end of the day, regardless of what side you are on, whether you believe it or you don't believe it, Michael Jackson is one person. The more important thing is that we have to learn, pretty much we have to just protect our kids. I think that's, that, was a, that was a lesson I got from all of this. We have to really, you know, protect our kids and also, you know, listen when they speak, you know, and hope that we can create an environment where our children can actually talk to us, you know. Anyways, guys, that's what I have for you today. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe. Be sure to like. Be sure to comment. And tell me, guys, what do you think? Should the radios be allowed to take Michael off the... I, I don't know. Off the air? I don't know. Well, thanks for watching. See you soon.